here we are on topic 1.2, writing a multi-step equation for a real-world situation. So it says here, Dane takes classes at both Westside Community College and Pinewood Community College. At Westside, class fees are $98 per credit hour. At Pinewood, class fees are $115 per credit hour. Dane is taking a combined total of 18 credit hours at the two schools. Suppose that they are taking um, W credit hours at Westside. Write an expression for the combined total dollar amount they paid for their class fees. So this one, you've got two things. You have one, you have the class fees for uh, Westside Community College. plus the class fees for Pinewood and we don't know what that total is. Okay. Then what they're asking us to do is um, they're saying that for West, he has to pay $98 per credit hour and he's taking W credit hours at Westside. So then I know exactly what to multiply the 98 by. It's 98 times the lowercase w. Plus, I know that at Pinewood, it's $115 per the number of hours that he has to take at Pinewood. However, I don't know what that number is, okay? I don't know how many hours I took at Pinewood, which I'm going to call little l, I mean little p. I do that together he took 18 hours so to me what makes sense is that instead of using P we want to say if I took 18 hours or if Dane took 18 hours and I already know how many he took at Westside all I would do is subtract to find out how many he took at Pinewood and now you have a linear equation where everything is in terms of just one variable now they do, they will accept this as your answer. However, they also might accept the answer if you um, simplify this expression. So 98W plus 2070 minus 115W. And then if I combine my like terms, they might also take this expression as well. I notice when I view the explanations or the answers, they're always in the simplified version. However, when I was doing the problems myself, I was just typing in the answer as soon as I got everything in one letter. And so I would type in this expression and I would get it marked correct. But the answers would always be typed in the simplified version. Now here we have let n be the middle number of three consecutive even integers. Write the expression for the sum of these integers. Before I begin this problem, there is something that you need to understand about integers. So if I'm talking about straight consecutive integers, think of that as um, like page numbers, right? You start with one page, the next page is going to be one more, the next page is going to be one more than that, which is n plus 2, the next page is going to be that previous page plus one more, which is n plus 3, and so on and so forth, depending on how many pages you're looking at, right? Um, when you do consecutive even or even the odd integers. It's like you're opening the book, but yet you're only looking at the front side of the pages, or you're only looking at the back side of the, of the pages, right? If you're only looking at the front side and it starts with page one, then all the front sides are gonna be the odd numbers. 
If you're looking at the back of the pages, that would start with page two, and so then you'd be looking at all the even pages if you're looking at all the back sides of the pages. So it doesn't matter where you start, whether you start on page one for the odd page, or you start on page two for the even pages. The next back page or the next front page would be two more pages. So if I started with page one, because I'm looking at the front sides, right? Then the next front side page is going to be page three. And the next front side page after that is going to be five. And the next front side page after that is going to be seven and so forth. Now, whether I'm looking at the back side pages, so the first one would start with number two, then the next back page would be number four, two plus two would be page four. Then the next back page would be two plus four, which is page six, and then two plus six, which is page eight, okay? So this is how you write consecutive even integers or consecutive odd integers. And then this is how you just write consecutive integers. So they all page numbers. It doesn't matter whether they're even or odd. In this particular problem, it says let n be the number of three, three, so I know how many of these guys to take, even integers. So I'm gonna take the first three expressions here, okay? So you have n plus n plus two plus n plus four. However, there's a problem here because it says let n be the middle number. And notice that this is my first number, this is my middle number, and this is the back number, the last number. This is in the middle guy is not just an n. I can turn it into just an n, but what did I do to that page number to make it go to this? I actually took away two, didn't I? So then what I need to do to stay consistent so that I'm at the same three pages, just a few pages over, I'm gonna have to take away two to all of the expressions. So then the first one becomes in minus two, and then the last page will become in plus two, because four minus two is positive two. Okay, and here it just took that away so that the middle number was in. Now I know it says um, write an expression for the sum of these integers. Oh, it just wants this. So again, this would be accepted by Alex, but they may also combine the like terms. So n plus n plus n is 3n, and negative 2 plus 2 would actually cancel each other out. So the um, simplified expression it would also accept is just 3n. So this one was very tricky. We had some new information and we had to manipulate that information as well in order to come up with the expression that they wanted.